Hi, and thank you for taking the time to watch my functional biomechanics project. My name is Allison Maynard, and I did my video analysis on the power snatch. Athletes in strength and power sports, such as football, weightlifting, and track and field events, use various types of powerlifting and Olympic lifting in their training. Olympic lifting has gained a lot of popularity due to the power, speed, and strength that it produces for athletes. The snatch has many variations, but the exercise I am focusing on is the power snatch. For those of you who are not familiar with the power snatch lift, I wanted to just show you a quick slow motion video so that you can have an understanding of where the athlete starts the lift and where the athlete ends the lift. All types of athletes use Olympic lifting in their sport, and I believe that it has become popular because it helps to have athletes of all different ages develop more power, speed, and strength. It is very important for athletes to learn the biomechanics of the power snatch. Training and developing proper technique is important when trying to apply the exercises to training purposes. Each variation of the snatch is different because each exercise alters the athlete's movement patterns and barbell velocity resulting in different adaptions. Sports such as football may require a higher power output from the hip and knee extensors at the same time. This is where the power snatch would be beneficial due to its demands to come from full knee extension and hip flexion up into full knee and hip extension with a bar. An article I found by Barton Yetz shows the movement path of the barbell with corresponding body positions at different points in time for two lifters. If you look at the first lifter, the knees and hips are flexed, ankles are plantar flexed, feet are in complete contact with the floor, and the trunk is held constant to make the force transition effective. It is important to understand the biomechanics for all types of athletes. Taller athletes start with more bending of the knees as shown in the bottom figure, whereas the shorter athlete begins the first pull from an angle that is larger. If you look at the taller athlete's knees, they're at an angle of 47 degrees, whereas the shorter athlete is at 80 degrees. I love this figure that Barton Yetz gives because it really breaks down the power snatch in its simplest form. While this figure shows the phases all the way into the power squat, it still gives great representation of the power snatch from phases 1 to 6. In transition to the first to second pull, in phases three and four, the knees are pushed toward the bar and the knee angle is decreased to 20 degrees. If the athlete can continue the pulling phase and extend the hips and the action can be performed correctly, it results in barbell movement without decreasing velocity of the bar. During the second pull, when the athlete raises up on their heels with both knee and hip extension, it results in a smooth transition from the first to second pull. When the athlete is at the end of the extension phase, this is where the weight of the bar has reached its maximum velocity, allowing the athlete to bring the bar overhead. Some people do not believe that the ankle movement has influence on performance and that ankle plantar flexion is incorrect technique. But many lifters have an active opening of the ankle during the second pull as an essential to vertical acceleration of the barbell, saying that it contrib contributes to about 10% of the maximum velocity. In the snatch, the hip extensors must produce the highest power demands. The hip extensors play a huge role in the whole chain of movement. If the hips do not supply sufficient power, the knee extensors tend to do too much work. 
hip power reaches its maximum value at the end of the transition phase. It is necessary to analyze the movement of the weight together with the limb movements around the main joints to be able to assess the work that the muscles are doing. Power is characterized by the conversion of physical work at given time intervals and determines the level of joint movements and external forces. One of the most important factors when assessing the power snatch is barbell acceleration, which is characterized by velocity versus time relationship of the barbell, which needs to continuously increase between the first and second pull. This maximum velocity is what allows the athlete to continue to a position six to eight. They're able to turn over and catch the bar. The athlete must be able to move downward with the movement and bring their feet in contact with the floor to decelerate the movement of the bar. When the athlete completes the catch phase, the arm should be locked out. The velocity of the bar should move continuously. This is mechanically effective because the lifter can transfer a minimum of physical work to reach a given velocity. The lift component of the work is about six times greater than the acceleration component. The relationship between power and work are comparable. Each phase of the biomechanical principle of the power snatch should be assessed before the athlete performs the whole movement. Now that we've fully analyzed the biomechanical principles of the power snatch, I hope that the importance of both proper technique and the principles of the movement will better help you apply the exercise to others.